Now, I said at the start that Fran would be doing all the slightly dangerous stuff that I don't want to. Um, and this is a prime example because the next stand is all about electricity. Hello again. I am here with Nina Ball from the National Physical Laboratory, or NPL. Nina, hi. What is NPL? Yeah, so at NPL, we're the National Physical Laboratory, so we're the National Metrology Institute for the UK. So that means that we hold the primary standards for all of the SI units. So basically what that means, like, so an SI unit is like a kilogram or a metre exactly. or anything that we measure. You tell us what that actually means. Yes, exactly, yes. And the seconds, for example, and another of those uh, units is the ampere, which is what we're talking about today. So the ampere is the unit that is used to measure uh, electrical current, essentially. And the ampere is what we, what we normally know as the amp, right? Yes. Yes, um, so yeah, we're talking about measuring electricity today and um, on this stand we just really wanted to demonstrate you know, what, what an ampere looks like because electricity, it's not really something that you can see so it, it can be quite hard to um, conceptualise what that looks like. Absolutely, it's not something that's tangible, is it? And so yeah. like, yeah, like what is an amp? Exactly, yeah, yeah so that is, that is the question of, uh, of this stand. So what we're aiming to do is um, is to turn this handle. Oh, it's been calling me this handle. <laughs> so I give it a tip. Okay. Yes. So the idea is that we turn it to generate uh, roughly an amp in current. Ah, I got like this is harder than I thought. <laughs> So the idea is that that should be enough to uh, power these kind of everyday items to give you an appreciation of just how much um, electrical current goes into an amp to run all of these items. <gasps> a lot! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this is what an ampere is, isn't it? Yes, so that, is, um, that means that we are running uh, just over 6 million billion electrons per second through that current, through that circuit. Oh God, just, just a few then? Just a few, exactly. And this is the type of stuff that you do, you look at actually what an an amp means, what a meter means, what a kilogram means, what anything that we measure actually means in practice and you make sure that people stick to it so a meter doesn't end up becoming like 30 centimeters. Exactly, exactly. It's all about yeah, accuracy and pre precision in those measurements and enabling confidence uh, in those measurements. And why is that important? So particularly the, the ampers um, is really important because um, you know most of our, our household items kind of operate in this you know amp region. And you see and that on the back of plugs don't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So, you know, going up the scale, it'll take thousands of, uh, thousands of amps to operate, you know, buildings and cars and things. But what we're really good at doing at MPL is, um, is looking at some of these lower levels um, of readings and really, really tiny um, amounts of current and electricity. That is super small. Yes, yeah, so that is 10 to the minus 21 Zepto amp. And that means that we can count uh, individual electrons going through a current and going through a circuit. And that's important because um, electrical devices they're, they're designed to work off a certain amount of amps isn't it so we've got to make sure that they're right exactly yeah exactly and as, as we go down the scale you know wristwatches operate from pico amps but as we go uh, down into more and more sensitive devices the the applications of that almost become um, more and more important so for example you know pico amps are required to operate radiation detectors so it's really important to know that the current going through that device is accurate so that we can trust those measures Absolutely. Oh gosh, yes. So not only are you measure, well, coming up with the standards for measuring electricity, but measuring electricity and making sure that that's right means that other measurements are yes. correct. And without standard measurements, we don't really have science, right? Well, exactly. Yeah, it's all about the confidence in those measurements and the confidence um, yeah, in those readings and Absolutely. calibrations. Absolutely. So yes, this is a lot of fun, yes. but it's actually got a, a serious meaning behind it. Exactly. Yes. Oh, and it certainly is a lot of fun. Right now, I'm going to be on here, but back to you. And let's see if I can get this any higher. Oh, come on, Red Car, come on. Keep going, Fran. I think you're very nearly there. Well, I'm pleased to have John Fletcher from the National Physical Laboratory in the studio with me. Welcome, John. Hello there. And um, we're going to be talking about electricity. Tell us what electricity is. Yeah, that's, it's an interesting question. I think a lot of people have difficulty understanding electricity. And historically, um, uh, we, we didn't necessarily have a very clear microscopic picture of what it was. Um, the, the originators of era, um, the first electrical measurements, uh, the, the people that sort of uh, paved the way and set the foundations for, for electrical metrology, the people after whom the units are named, like Ampere, they didn't really have a very clear microscopic view of, of what it really was. They could generate it and they could even use it, um, but they, they didn't, didn't really know what the real picture was. Um, and so, 
the, the, the developments that we have in uh, modern technology for and nanotechnology mean that we can start to see what electricity is and use that, that, that uh, microscopic view of it. And that's the flow of electrons, yep, which are the, the of... <laughs> negatively charged particles inside the atom. And Nina has just told Fran on the exhibition floor that you can now measure electricity by the electron. Yeah, I, we have devices in our lab that can dispense electricity in its sort of most granular form. I can, I can, I can inject an electron into circuit one at a time. And wow. this, is, this is a kind of, um, this is a, it's, it's, it's a sort of miraculous capability, really. It's a bit like dispensing water one molecule at a time. Maybe if you turn the tap on and turn it off yeah, really yeah, quickly, yeah. then you, you, you that, that's, the, that's, the, that's how um, astounding it is to be able to control particles at this scale. And it's, um, it, it means that if you're an electrical metrologist, it naturally appeals as, a, as the kind of thing that you would like to support your measurement system, because electrons are this uh, universal, identical, reproducible uh, f um, particle. Unit, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like it, it, it's a bit like um, if somebody if somebody pays you, then they pay you in pounds, and you mm. know what a pound is, and everybody agrees on what a pound is, and then you know that you've been paid the correct amount of money. If I give you a precise number of electrons, then you know you, you know how much charge I've given you, and, and it's the same kind of precision accounting but in the electrical domain. Yeah, so, so this is like a, this is a very tiny scale of electricity, yeah. and I want to talk more about that in a minute, but what about the very large scale of electricity? Like, what's the biggest quantity of electricity ah, that... Yeah. So that's a really together? interesting question, yeah. So, so, for, so when we were designing the stand, we, we, we tried to work out how to kind of, um, how to orient people with respect to the size of the ampere. Um, because people have a lot of um, people have a day to day experience of what a kilogram is or what a what a yes, that's true. Um, uh, and and what a meter is and so on. But giving people an idea of what an amp represents is more difficult. Um, and so a lot of what we've been doing is, is just sort of filling in the basics. Um, if you, I guess, one way of quantifying a large amount of electricity would be to add, add together the the power consumption of all of the of all of the uh, of all of the electricity generators in the world. Mm. Um, but even even one amp itself is a huge number of electrons. It's six billion billion electrons flowing per second. So even right. even before you start to get to a big scale of electricity, you already have a lot of electrons on your hands. Which is why Fran is struggling. <laughs> so, I think. Yeah. Um, what with these tiny bits of electricity, are they useful? Yeah. So I think the um, uh, small current metrology, um, the, the sort of picoamperes and nanoamperes and femtoamperes even really 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 tiny currents. So these are fractions They're, of yeah, tiny exactly the it's it's, it's astonishing so so people um, a, a lot of people that work even people that work in electrical measurement mm. they don't realize that currents get this small and still have some meaning so mm. if you're an electrician you spend your life dealing with amps and maybe you know about milliamps maybe you're interested in the the limit of sensitivity like how much electricity you can go through somebody's body before they realize this but all of those amounts of current are huge compared to the amount that a radiation detector or, or a particle detector, or or, or, a, or a light sensor might might receive, um, and so the the requirement for to calibrate things at these low current levels is is is, is, a, is a real need. Um, and but from my own personal perspective, one of the things that's interesting about electron pumps is that um, controlling electrons is a quantum mechanical thing. You you're, you're not dealing with like a ping pong balls. Yeah. You're dealing with this quantum particle. So some of the interesting avenues are to try and harness the, the quantumness of electrons um, and use those for um, sensing or computing applications that, that use uh, quantum mechanics. And this is why um, NPL's quantum technology program is supporting this kind of development because you want to explore quantum, you want to explore quantum mechanics and the, the way that it can be exploited. And if we just come back to the, the measurements of electricity, why is it important to have a kind of a base yeah, uniform it's, unit it's, there? It's, it's, a, it's that's a really good question because it's something that I think you, a lot of people take for granted. They assume that everybody can always agree on, mm -hmm. on, on things. And the metrology community is actually a really great community because we all work together and we all, because we all know how important it is for measurements to cross borders and cross boundaries. Um, so um, the by having um, things that are based on fundamental physics, like the charge on the electron, it means that we can always agree on, on quantifying electricity. Um, and the, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a universal property of, of that. So my electrons are the same as your electrons, and somebody in another country, they also have the same kind of electrons. And if you want to do exactly the same experiment on the moon or somewhere else, then you will always get the same answer. 
And that's guaranteed if you do it this way, but it isn't guaranteed if you do it by making special batteries or any other kind of artifact-based system. Thank you so much, John.